I'm going to take you through a series of short videos looking at soil management and the interaction of, of what we do to manage our soil when we're integrating with cultural control of, of grass weeds. So I'm going to start off with a, uh, a slate test. This is a really useful way of demonstrating how soils are behaving in certain circumstances. I've got exactly the same soil here. These soils are about two feet apart in the field. One, this one here, is cultivated constantly. Uh, and this one is, has not been cultivated now for about seven years. This one's now down to about one and a half percent organic matter. And this piece is running at around four percent organic matter. And this is typical of how our soils are going across the UK. We are losing organic matter really quite rapidly now. We're down to these low percentage levels. And this is having a fundamental uh, impact on the way the soil behaves in the field. We've noticed in recent years that our soils don't seem to be able to take wet weather anything like they did uh, in the past. And that's because of the lack of soil organic matter. Um, so I'm going to place the uncultivated soil in this jar over here. And I'm going to place the cultivated soil in this jar over here. So here we are some three hours later, just revisiting the, the slate test. Now you can see straight away that the cultivated soil at the jar is cloudy and that's the silt element of the soil being suspended within the water whereas the uncultivated soil is crystal clear and again you can also see the amount of soil that's just uh, degraded and fallen to the bottom of the jar and it's still happening now um, as that soil just breaks apart and that's, that's happening because as the water rushes into the cavities within that soil there's no glues within there to slow the passage of that water down it rushes in, compresses the gas uh, that's held within the pores of the soil, compresses that and it bursts the soil apart. So every so often we get little explosions of soil dropping to the bottom. And that's what happens in the field as rain pounds down on that soil and the raindrops, large raindrops in the winter can hit this soil at 60 or 70 miles an hour. What we also get on the cultivated soil compared to the uncultivated soil is this scum regularly forming on the top of the water and that's the biology in the soil washing out much like live yeast when we're bread making or beer making and there's none uh, of that occurring in the uncultivated soil and if I just give this soil in here just a little a little touch you can see how easily that now breaks up barely putting any pressure on that at all and that completely breaks up yet if I touch this one over here it's soil, so it will break up. It's now being filled with water, uh, but you can see that it breaks up at a much, much slower rate, and you can see that breaking down into to aggregates that hold on the bottom of the glass, and the water still stays relatively clear. We're not getting silt being suspended within that water, which live in the field would then be running around on the soil surface, plugging all the holes and causing us that sediment cap on the top of the soil and also with all that soil having fallen apart now ending up in the bottom of the jar which would be washed down through your soil is there's no ability for that individual aggregate to store moisture whereas this aggregate here is storing moisture that suck that water in that's stored within the organic matter now and the cavities within that soil which roots can access all the way through the spring and particularly in the summer as, as temperatures rise and, and rainfall decreases then we can get extra yield from our crops uh, by utilising that moisture storage uh, within that, that, uh, that soil aggregate. So it's particularly important for our lighter soils to be able to store moisture and for our silt soils and our heavy soils it's particularly relevant because we get better soil resilience to rainfall as it uh, falls throughout the winter period.